Police officers have one of the greatest responsibilities one could in any profession. To protect everyday people, to de-escalate chaos, and to maintain the peace. While many people are grateful for the service these officers conduct on a day-to-day -day basis, others do not and see it as their goal to undermine these public servants as much as possible. The Bible makes sure to let its position known about those that uphold justice and civility in a world where criminals are out to hurt the innocent and cause iniquity. Let's turn to one of those references in the scriptures. Romans 13 verses 1 to 6 Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to do thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. This is not the only passage where we will find authority given to the powers that be, as we are to subject ourselves to said powers because they are ordained of God. Passages like Titus 3 verses 1 to 2 demonstrate the same sentiment. And Peter repeats the same ideas in his first epistle, in which let's read that passage as well. 1 Peter 2 verses 13 to 17. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. It is expected that law enforcement will vanquish the evils of society, according to the will of God, where even the Ten Commandments demonstrate God's law against murder, theft, slander, and other such commandments that the authorities uphold for the good of all. There are very few exceptions to the list of rulers that followers of Christ have not been made to respect as most of these New Testament epistles were written at times when Christian persecution was at its highest. Even with all of this understood, there are specific boundaries to which those who fear God are made to submit to secular law, as there are times where the necessity to stand for the Lord's commands supersede the governance of man. Acts 5 verse 29 then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. James 4 verse 17 Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. While there are times when the law can work on the side of a Christian, with the example of Paul using his right to be tried as a Roman citizen, as found in Acts 22 verse 24 to 23 verse 10, there are many instances in the Bible where civil disobedience was committed in response to unjust and wicked laws, in which those who feared the Lord had politely and in a civil manner declined to obey. 
In Exodus 1 verses 15 to 20, the Hebrew midwives refused to obey Pharaoh's commands to kill Jewish sons. In Daniel 3 verses 1 to 18, it demonstrates how Nebuchadnezzar had built an idol for all of Babylon to bow down to, which went against the beliefs of the men named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men civilly disobeyed the king, refusing to bow down as this would give worship to something other than God, and even answered the king, saying, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Were they were to suffer persecution by being thrown in a furnace, until the Lord saved them. In the same book, in chapter 6, in spite of the command of King Darius, the prophet Daniel prayed to God while he had those who wished him harm spying on him which led to him being thrown in a lion's den where he was preserved from the beasts he was imprisoned with. These are three examples in which obedience to God's law was placed over the law of the land, in which God blessed the quote-unquote criminals rather than those who were in political positions of power. God gives man his authority, but when man's authority starts to challenge God's authority, then that authority is superseded by the one who has all authority. Every officer will have to give an account before the Lord one day, along with those who were subject to the powers that be. When it comes to sin, we are all criminals, and yet it is through Jesus' blood where we can be acquitted of all charges, where no man or woman will be given exception. Psalm 89 verse 14 Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face.